Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I'm back in the shop, but I just wanted to do a quick follow-up to the whole series of how to make a lure from scratch. I wanted to kind of uh, tick off the goals and whether we achieved them and uh, just sort of give uh, my point of view of some of the things that I strive for and maybe eh, didn't work out like I thought. Uh, so stick around. Baby, look at that. Yeah, baby. That is a good trout. <laughs> look at that. All right, so let's take a look at the results of our efforts over these five uh, videos. This is the first one that came out of the mold, uh, and it's the one I took fishing. Uh, I didn't mess around. I just grabbed it, took it out there. I uh, put a quick finish on it and uh, it shows because uh, I lost a lot of the finish. I'll go ahead and put some close-ups of before and after. So my first goal was to achieve a panfish shaped lure that was the easiest thing to do i started off with a circle on that uh, dry erase board and that was my concept to go from a circle to a fish shape or sh fish like shape so i wanted to make this lure to be a slow sinking twitch bait but a, a bait that would swim as you uh, reeled it back so you could vary your retrieve uh, have it be erratically twitching slowly sinking or swimming kind of gently with a nice serpentine movement all the way back to the boat uh, I, I achieved all those goals. Um, you saw uh, uh, the whole theory behind getting a wobble on the drop and we certainly got that shape which is fat on the top and it wobbles pretty amazingly. It, it's, uh, it's pretty cool to see in the water. Now right out of the mold uh, we, we achieved the weight we wanted which was just right at 18. It actually weighed a little more than 18 uh, and now uh, with all the foil and everything it weighs uh, right around 21 and a half something like that, grams but in in the salt water out there it worked perfect. Uh, it sank just about right. The tail was sort of a fanciful idea. I like the idea just for aesthetics. Uh, I was a little concerned that the tail would diminish the uh, swimming action and it does. I put a feather on here to sort of uh, minimize that, uh, but it, it, it still made a difference, uh, although a, a lot less than the uh, bristle tails. Now the pinfish had their uh, way with this little tail and I could feel them pecking at it the whole time. It was kind of fun. The other characteristic was the erratic twitch. Now that was pretty surprising to me. This thing twitches a lot more erratic than I thought. I thought it would swim a little more, but I think because I, I put that weight right at the center of gravity, it, it tends to just rotate on that center of gravity. So when I twitch it hard, this thing will turn 180 degrees, which is kind of cool uh, if it doesn't 
rectangle your line. We just let it wobble down to depth. I would slow roll it back and then I would just give it a hard twitch and it would turn all the way around and you could almost count down the, the just a few seconds before that fish just got mad and, and hit it. And I caught a lot of junk fish. I caught blues, which I guess not really junk fish, but I caught blues. I got a, a bunch of ladyfish. I probably caught uh, six or seven uh, that I, I didn't I didn't bother putting on the video. The other thing was castability, right? I mean, how well it casts uh, and how straight it casts. Being this flat uh, and this kind of a broad lure, uh, I wasn't expecting a whole lot of distance and I was hoping it wouldn't drift too much to one side or the other. And it didn't drift. It went pretty straight. It just didn't cast all that far. Uh, I got a, uh, probably I would call it an average lure for casting. I haven't tried any of the allures with the rattle chamber in it. I usually extend that rattle chamber far enough so that it acts as a weight shift uh, chamber and gives me a little more distance on the cast and a little more accuracy. But that's yet to be seen. I'm not going to claim that it actually works. The big win, I think, the big success was that swimming action. And I, I hope to get, get you a little better uh, video on it. But it swims just amazingly. I really didn't expect it to swim as well as it did. It doesn't even look like it's a single piece body. Uh, it, it does such a nice job swimming. And in fact, at one point when I was uh, trying to take some video back there in that creek and I was pulling along the surface, a redfish came out of nowhere from the depth and just slurped at it and missed it uh, just completely. So that swim action really is a result of getting this toe eye in the exact right spot. Getting that uh, line of pull right along that uh, dividing line between those two equal areas on the body is, is key. And that technique that I kind of developed is the simplest technique I could think of. If you've got CAD and you're good at it, uh, you can certainly ask the CAD program to find that line for you. If you guys have any questions on what I did and how I did it, certainly comment and let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video.